Hi, I'm Kay Choi. Welcome back to my channel. I post videos about career and education, so I often get questions asking about how to study for different types of standardized exams, one of them being the GRE. So today I want to share how I studied for the GRE, so I'll let you know what score I got, what books I used, how exactly I planned out my whole study schedule, all of that good stuff. If you're new to my channel, then welcome. Again, I post videos about career, education, I do travel vlogs, so if any of that sounds interesting to you then please hit the subscribe button and while you're there hit the notification bell as well so you can get notified whenever I post a new video. Before we get into how to study for the GRE let's talk about scores because the first step to studying for the GRE is to set a target or goal score for yourself. Now the GRE has three sections verbal reasoning aka reading comprehension and vocab, quantitative reasoning or math, and analytical writing which includes two essays. The verbal and quantitative sections are scored between 130 and 170. So the lowest score you can get is 130, highest score is 170 for each of those sections. And the analytical writing section is scored from 0 to 6 in half point increments. The average score on the verbal and quantitative sections is about 150 to 152, and the average score for writing is about a 3.5. Now that's the average score, so in terms of what a good score is or what your target score should be, that really depends on the program that you're applying to. For example, at the time I was applying to UCL for a master's in management, the recommended minimum score for the GRE was a 310, so that's a 155 on both verbal and quantitative. The more competitive the program is, the higher your score probably has to be, and also depending on the subject of your course, you might need a higher score in a specific section. So if you're applying to an engineering graduate program, then you probably need a higher score in the quantitative reasoning section. So in terms of setting your goal, take a look at all the programs you're applying to, and they usually share what the minimum required score is in order to apply, or they might show a student profile and share the average score of students that are in that program. And now for context, because I know some people will ask, and I do think it's helpful, my scores were a 162 in verbal and in quantitative, and I got a 4.5 in analytical writing. Overall, it's a pretty good score. I did better in the verbal reasoning than in quantitative in terms of percentile. I also could have done better overall. It's obviously not a perfect score, which is why this video is not called how to get a perfect score on the GRE. But hopefully my tips for studying for the GRE will help you, and with some consistent studying, I really do think that you can get to whatever your goal is. So the next step after you set your target score is to sign up for your test, and I guess really this could be interchanged with setting your goal score, but anyway, one of the first things you need to do is actually sign up for your exam. That way you not only have your goal for your score, but you have a target date that you need to cover all of your exam content by. This will make it much easier for you to plan out your studies and figure out how much you need to get done every single week because you have that end date in mind. Once you've signed up for your exam and have your date in place, now it's time to buy some books. There are lots of different brands and companies out there, but the one that I used was Kaplan. I'm not necessarily recommending that one way or another, but it's just the brand that I happened to use when I studied for the GRE. So whichever brand you use, I recommend getting at least four books. So that is one book for each of the three sections of the exam. And then the fourth book you should get is a book of practice exams. So a book that covers the entire test. And in addition to those books, which are gonna be your core study materials. I recommend getting some supplemental materials, specifically a vocab card deck, so that you can use those cards or flashcards um, on any free time that you have in between your studies. Once you have your books, you can plan out your study schedule. What I would do is take a look at how many weeks you have until your exam, and how many chapters or pages you have in your book. Then it's just about dividing up the content so that you can make sure you cover everything in all four of those books at least a week or two before the exam. Chances are you are a full-time student or you're working at least part-time if not full-time while you're studying for the test, so it's really important to set aside your study time and figure out what exactly you need to cover to make sure you get everything covered before your test. Now your specific study 
schedule or calendar will look different depending on how many weeks you have until your test and what exact books you got. But in general, I would do something like this. On weekdays, you would study from the three books that cover the three specific sections of the exam. So maybe on Mondays and Wednesdays, you're covering quantitative reasoning. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, you're doing verbal reasoning. And on Fridays, you're working on analytical writing. Then during the weekends, you would want to reserve time to take your practice exams. So the exam takes about three hours and 45 minutes. So you'll want about four hours to take the exam as well as some more time to review your answers after you've taken it. Then during any pockets of free time throughout the week, you can take out your vocab flashcards and study those to supplement your verbal reasoning studying. I do think it's important to build in a rest day, which can also be a catch up day in case you weren't able to keep up with your schedule for a given week. Having a study schedule or calendar shouldn't be something that stresses you out by making you feel like you have all these deadlines you need to reach every day, but it really should do the opposite by helping you plan ahead so you can feel as prepared as you can when you take your test. The format you use for the study schedule is up to you. I personally just used a Microsoft Word calendar template and I filled it out on my computer, printed it out, put it above my desk, and that way every day after I completed that day's studies, I just checked it off my calendar. And on that calendar, I wrote the specific chapters or pages that I needed to cover in each book. And that way I knew that as long as I stuck to the schedule, I would get all my studies done. You can put your study schedule in your phone calendar. You can put it in a spreadsheet. You can even do little sticky flags or whatever on your book to divide up the different pages, whatever works for you. And of course, the next step after you actually plan out your study schedule is to stick to it. It's not gonna be perfect. There are going to be days when you don't have time to study. There are going to be days when you do have time to study, but it's just not going into your brain. But again, the schedule is not supposed to stress you out. It's supposed to help you plan ahead and ensure that you get everything covered. So you can make sure to use your rest days if you need to catch up. And as you're writing your schedule, build in enough buffer time for yourself to allow for those types of days. So while there will be some flexibility here and there in your study schedule, I would definitely take your practice exams seriously. And I would recommend trying to take those exams around the same time that you'll be taking your actual exam. For example, if your exam is at eight in the morning and maybe you're not a morning person, it will be good practice for you to take those practice exams at 8 a.m. so you can get your body and mind used to it. That's all I have for this video. I hope that if you are taking the GRE, this is really helpful for you as you plan out your studies and I wish you the best of luck. Please let me know in the comments what types of videos you'd like to see because it really helps me out to know what type of content you all want on this channel. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!